so guys now we will talk about another important topic of setup about tmos architecture so this is very important to understand so in cisco we have ios in juniper we have junus the same way in f5 one operating system which is you deployed is called traffic management operating system that is called tmos so in this case guys how the traffic comes is you have an architecture here f5 is divided into two interfaces one management traffic so your tmos is divided into two traffic mode one is data traffic or you can say data plane one is called management plane so all your management related tasks will go via this plane so f5 has a dedicated interface for management all your data plane traffic will go via data plane so when i talk about network interfaces guys you will see one interface as management one interface will be like this 1.1 1.2 1.3 1 so that are all part of your data traffic and tmos is your heart it is a platform either it can be your hardware level or a software level and the operating system which f5 runs is on tmos you can see here and for admin task like gui let's say if you want to take gui or cli or let's say you want to configure ntp or dns all that traffic goes via management plane so you have a tmos then you have modules behind that then you have an i rule there is a separate engine for i rule processing then there is a full proxy architecture i will discuss this this is very very important what is full proxy then you have a specific ssl hardware compression engine so that was i was talking about difference between a load balancer what is versus if you don't have a load balancer you are doing directly on server your server does not have a dedicated ssl engine but here you have a separate ssl engine for your ssl traffic guys so your tmos is the foundation for all network traffic whether it's a virtual traffic or hardware traffic so all your traffic flow that is going to f5 that will pass through your tmos so it will have its own dedicated cpu hardware ram hard disk so your tmos will have dedicated cpu memory <coughs> okay so that is a tmos components which are available and for admin task you have a separate management plane so that was all about your operating system what is tmos so when you log in via cli you will see that it is built on tmos let me show you i will go to putty and i will log in into this device you will see you will see operating system putty so i will log in into putty and here i will just log in 192.168 137 my device so you will see operating system here tmos here you can see the tmos operating system so it is 
all based on your Linux. This operating system is built on your Linux platform. All your Linux commands will be run here. So all your CLI tests can be done by this and your operating system will have your kernel. And that kernel is known as TMM, Traffic Management Micro Kernel. So this was all about your operating system. Now there was one concept of full proxy architecture. What does full proxy architecture mean? So guys, you can see that you have clients, you have F5 load balancer, then you have a server, server one, server two, server three, server four. So can you see that there is a separate TCP handshake between client to F5. Once SYN packet is sent to client to F5, then F5 will send SYNAC. Then client will send acknowledgement. So that is called until this three way handshake is completed, F5 will not forward your traffic to servers. So there is a separate TCP connection from client to F5. And after that, this TCP handshake is full, then there will be a HTTP packet sent. Once this HTTP packet is sent, then there will be a separate three way handshake from F5 to server. That is how F5 is used as a full proxy architecture. It has a separate front end data traffic and it has a separate connection of backend. So that is how their architecture is built. And this full proxy architecture is only been introduced in F5. So it maintains two side connection full proxy. One client side, one is this. You can also say this is called client side connection. This is server side connection. This connection does not have any interlink with this. It is independent. Can you see this? Client to F5 is encrypted, but this connection is unencrypted. So you can run separate protocols here and separate protocols here. This is independent. That is called full proxy architecture. Because there are separate handshake. So now what comes into picture is why another scenario of full proxy architecture. Can you see this? This traffic is compressed. This traffic is uncompressed. You can do it this way also. This is on HTTP2 version. This is on HTTP 1.1 version. So you can run separate protocols on client to F5, separate protocols on F5 to the server. So if someone asks you what is full proxy architecture, you can say that full proxy maintains two side of connection. One is client side connection. One is server side connection. And what it gives when F5 is acting as a full proxy architecture, it can analyze your traffic, it can intercept your traffic. So it can see what request you are getting and what response you are getting from server. So full proxy helps F5 to completely understand the connection. So F5 is sitting as a middleman device. It has a capacity to detect, analyze what is coming. Even if he can modify and send traffic to the server, he can receive the traffic from client. He can modify and after that he can send traffic to the 
सर्व फुल प्रॉक्सी हेल्प एफ फाइव ऑन हाउ टू हैंडल कनेक्शन इट गिव्स यू मोर ग्रेन्युलिटी टू अंडरस्टैंड टू सेपरेट एंटिटीज वन टेबल विल बी मेड हेयर ऑफ टीसीपी कनेक्शन वन टेबल विल बी मेड हेयर you can use different profiles here let's say i want to use ssl profile here i don't want to use ssl profile here so that is all about your full proxy architecture very very important guys this is an interview question which will be asked what is full proxy architecture so initially let's say i don't have f5 so client is directly communicated to your application servers but when tmos comes into picture first advantage it will maintain high availability second it will equally distribute your traffic third it will protect application from attacks server resources it will optimize server resources if server resources is highly utilized then f5 will make sure that this client request will go to another servers this we have already talked about what are the advantages of implementing performance security load balance and availability so it will give a full visibility to f5 to how to handle this type of traffic and how to handle this type of traffic so this is tcp first sin packet sin ac ac can you see this until this is successful guys f5 will not forward traffic to server after that once f5 receives http get after three way handshake then only there will be a tcp handshake between f5 to server that is by default another important term by default f5 is a deny device what does it means until you configure virtual server on f5 f5 will not process a traffic let's say i got a requirement to deploy a website okay i got a requirement to deploy a website in f5 i need to first create a virtual server virtual server is nothing ip address of your website plus port number port number can be your website can be hosted on 80 443 or it can be on any other port mostly your web applications are on http based or https based see once you f5 receives http get then there will be a can you see first connection second third fourth then fifth sixth seventh after that http get the same packet f5 will forward to server then there will be a response traffic because your website is hosted here right your server will provide a page to f5 f5 will provide same page to client when you access cnets.com guys you get a page right so from where you are getting a page you are getting a page from your server and can you see this separate client and server connection green is client connection blue is server connection that is why it is called full proxy architecture it gives you more granularity it will separate two entities and it is fully independent one session is fully independent on another session
and full proxy gives F5 a visibility. He can intercept it, it he can analyze it. That is what is called full proxy architecture. You can take a snapshot if you want. Now, hardware, how F5 hardware looks like. Let's say I have a 2000 series hardware box. So this is how it looks like. We have a dedicated management port for F5. We have a console cable. Let's say you want to configure F5 from scratch. In that case, guys, you need a console access. You call data center engineer. He will ask him to plug his laptop on the console cable so that you can get an access. After that, what you need to configure? You need to configure management IP so that it can come to your network. So that is where your console cable comes in where you want to access the resources of F5. Then there is a failover cable. This is used for high availability. When we will build active passive in that case that this concept came into picture. Then guys, there is a USB port. Let's say your F5 you have upgraded, but it's not booting up. You can use USB board to boot. And this LCD panel will give you the color, yellow, amber light, green light. If green light is coming, everything is up. If a yellow light is or orange light is coming, there is an issue. Then there are fiber ports and copper ports. <clears throat> this is how your hardware, very important point guys. They will ask you, what are the ports available in your F5? This is a question which will be asked. So many people miss this. So you should understand. And console port can be your serial K port or it can be your RG45 also. So this is, I want to finish here.